This particular presentation is on cabin sheds or cabin stalls. And I need to give credit to Mr. Wayne Shriver and the crew at OARDC EARS for their uh, construction of these facilities. Now, here's a wish list. And I mentioned as a wish list that we, you may not get all your wishes, but uh, a cabin shed or cabin stall should be easy to clean. It should be readily accessible to the cows and the cow herd and vehicles. It's preferably inside. It's easy for the cows to get into, and it's installed to take advantage of the cow's instincts to return to the herd. It can be operated by one person. It must be durable to withstand stress and have a head gate, ideally one that avoids choking, and be well let in the rear and the side and have gates on the side that swing out of the way. Now here's a basic design of a calving shed or calving stall. The cattle would come in through the gate and then come in here and here's the uh, head gate or stanchion and that's where they're gonna be restrained. If the cow goes down, these gates swing away uh, from, from that animal. Now, there's some lights back here in the rear area, so working with the cow, ideally one on the side. And then after we've got the calf pulled and the cow is here, we can move them over here and they can remain there until they're ready to go back with the herd. Now, I've seen some where they just have a head gate in the back of the barn and one gate. Well, that's better than a lasso. Growing up, that was the way we did it and I wouldn't recommend it uh, in the future. Well, here's the simplest of the designs, perhaps. Uh, this is the first calving shed. It's in an open pasture, but it's close to the calving area and the cows. And now in the summertime, a two-wheel drive that's got some ground clearance can get to it. But in March, uh, I probably need a four-wheel drive. Now remember the wish list. Uh, ideally, it's easily accessible to the cattle and vehicles. Well, this one is where the cow herd is, but some accessibility issues there. So, uh, but it, it does have advantage of being close to the cow herd. It is a very simple design. Notice there's no concrete in it. And it's designed in a U configuration. And we're gonna kind of go through it like a cow would. So here the cow would come in through this, uh, this one side and here's the first gate and come to the second gate. And just using a, a chain here to hold that gate there and one of the things on the wish list was the facility should be durable. Well, they've put in a buffer wall so the cattle wouldn't tear up the exterior wall. Here's the second gate again, but it swings over to the backside of this calving shed. So here we have that second gate and they happen to have a, a chain around it here, just holding it in place. So we've got a holding area here and there's a holding here 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 against a third gate. So here's that second gate swung away, and there's the third gate. Now we're gonna make the turn in this U configuration, and here we've come around. Now one of the things in that wish list was we want the cow to think she's going back to the herd. Well, she's made that turn, and perhaps thinking that maybe she's gonna move more easily towards this holding facility. Uh, this corral head gate wasn't gonna be used ever again in a corral. So they've used it here in the calving shed. It's open all the way to the bottom, which is a good thing. You probably still have to open it up a little bit, even when say what the cow went down. And I mentioned there's no concrete, it's just a dirt floor. Also, there's no electricity and no water in this facility. Thinking more immediately about the light, this wall is opened up. So this is under roof, but you can see outside uh, from the roof on, outside, though there's a roof. So if it's raining straight down, ideally you're not gonna get wet. Now, if it comes in this way, you might get a little wet, but it is providing light. Uh, hopefully it's a moonlit night and all sorts of light coming through here and through the front. Uh, you may well need another light over here, some sort of lantern to assist. Uh, also, these gates, even on the lower sides, can kick out in case the cow goes down. This is just a look at that facility from the outside. Notice now there's a, in the, in the U, the middle part is a pin. So you can open the, 
uh, gate right here, the cow, the calf here, can be, be moved into this middle uh, holding area. Remember, there's no uh, water here, so you're gonna have to bring in water uh, for that animal. So you might wanna have a big barrel, that sort of thing, during the calving season. This is just a look for, of that facility from the outside. Now, the next facility is utilizing more manufactured materials. Now, they have a commercial calving pen here in the, on the inside. Also notice the number of panels in here. And they have concrete in this particular facility. I don't think it's particularly thick. In fact, the way they're probably clean out this facility is a shovel and pitchfork. So maybe four inches is enough. Uh, whereas if it's in a heavy traffic area, you may need at least something like six inches in uh, concrete uh, for heavier traffic areas. Well, here we go into this facility, and here's the calving pen. Notice there's some manufactured holding pens. They've just, you might say, plug and play into this uh, calving shed. As the cow comes into this calving facility, it, this uh, head gate is right here. The, the gates here open up on both sides, but this, this is how they, the, they're held together. It's kind of a teeth uh, uh, latch, so it can gradually ratchet down, and let's say the cow goes down, you, with this lever, unhook that, and then the, the gates can swing away. Now the head gate, and this one was designed for calving, notice how it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So think about that cow going down, and uh, you know a cow's neck is longer than it is wide. And here are the holding pins, uh, time's limited, and you do have some uh, financial ability. You could maybe do something like this, these holding pins. Uh, have you certainly have your cabin equipment ready to go in the cabin facility. Here's the entrance area for, for this cabin facility. One of the advantages, one of the wish list things was easily accessible. This is uh, located very near a very good farm road. The third calving facility is actually meant to be temporary. They're using a barn that's normally used for other things. This was designed to be a cattle feeding facility. So they take, they put in a commercial calving pen and use some you know, extra panels, but this facility has water and electricity because it is set up to feed cattle. So maybe you've got an area on your farm that you don't use all the time. Uh, maybe you can slide in a calving facility for temporary purposes. It has the advantages of a, you know, this is a heavy traffic area, so it can, uh, you know, kind of minimize the mud problems. It is located right next to a corral, so very accessible if you need to move animals around in trailers and such. And this is just looking at that barn, uh, uh, from, from the corral. There's some water out here, that sort of thing. Now, this is 2020, and uh, the, the expo has been canceled this year, but if you're ever interested in looking at some uh, equipment for calving, uh, consider the Ohio Beef Expo. If there's one, there's two or more people there that have some of these manufactured calving facilities that you can look at, certainly purchase, but even think about design as well. well.